Oh, the animal kingdom. So guys, how you doing today? Open the shop together here. Maybe a cat fight. These two cats don't like each other. Don't need that right now, too early. So I was gonna answer a few questions real quick before I uh, lose my train of thought. <clears throat> when was on these stickers? I've got the design, you know, I got the sticker here. This girl, she wants 20 bucks. Hang on a minute, this cat's gonna meow till I throw food on the ground. Here's your pile, baby cat. Where you at? There you go, there you go. Mm -hmm. Now you go on out of here. Come on, Missy. Go on, Missy. Yep, no cat food for you, you got dog food. Big old bag of it. Mm-hmm. Who's a good girl? Are you a good girl? Where's the brown hound? All right, brown dog. Watch your buddy. Stay in your yard. You hear me? Yeah. You want to go outside? Yeah, I'm gonna get the animals all sorted out here. Come on. Kitty, 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 kitty. You jumping? Come on. You want me to open the gate for you? Here you go. Okay. Wanna jump? She's a jumper. Alright, so I was gonna do this video, maybe. But anyway, uh, Andrew will probably pop in here now. Right, 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 right. So somebody asked me about the Debellus Pluses. Those are on sale for $350. Uh, which is a pretty good deal. I really like mine. This is uh these are the guns I use, you know. I have the cheaper guns over there, but I don't use those too much. I do use my starting line when I have a cup for it for base. Your welding bottles in my front seat. Okay, thank you. So the plus here, uh I guess this is developed as, you know, they would consider this their older technology, but uh uh I really love the way this thing sprays. I got the one four tip in it. Uh, this cup is something I put on there. It comes with just a regular aluminum cup. <clears throat> uh, however, this gun doesn't come with the gauge, you know, the regulator. It does come with three different uh, fluid tips. So if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to uh, change your fluid delivery, if you want to use it for base code, if you want to restrict it, you know, if you want to go with the 1.4 like I did, I think it's a 1.4, a 1.3, and a 1.2. Uh, I found that the one, you know, the one four seems to be perfect for the gun. I don't know for that air cap and you know the pressure that I like to spray at. You can turn the pressure up with this uh, Devolvus Plus. And the thing, uh, what I'll get with here is this is a Sicola. You guys see me paint a lot of cars with this Sicola. It's a, uh, it's a great gun. You know, I love it. It puts the finish on really nice. Uh, I found that I have to back the the fluid adjustment full trigger and uh, it's almost like this could use a little bit bigger air cap uh, it's also on four but this is more of a HVLP it sprays at a lower air pressure and uh, if you're doing fenders you know and you're doing small panels uh, a hood you know this gun is perfect it sprays really nice uh, the quality is just phenomenal uh, I found that it's just not as fast as the the plus now this gun, you can't get a run with it. You know, I found that uh, it's very impossible, for me anyway, to get a run. I mean, if you stop in the middle of a stroke or whatever, you know, you could possibly get a run. And uh, added too much reducer, you could get a run. But I mean, uh, as a rule, it's just very hard to get a run and it lays the clear out very nice. Uh, I've sold a couple of these and the guys just love them. Uh, and they probably find the same thing, you know, it's just really hard to get a run, but you do have to slow down a little bit with that gun. Now with the Develvis Plus, you have to, you know, you got to be a painter. And uh, 
the Velvet's Plus will, will, it'll make you get a run, you know? I mean, it won't make you get a run, but it will put a run in the car, you know? If you slow down too much with that gun, it will put the material on there, and it's, uh, it's laying it down, baby. And if you like painting like that, like I do, uh, that's the gun for you. It's fast, it lays it out really like glass. You can turn the pressure up. You can even turn the pressure down is what makes the gun sort of unique. Uh, so it's, it's got a wider, uh, uh a wider range of uses i guess than the sicola the sicola is uh it's a little slower it's more uh, environmentally friendly you know it puts less material down less material in the air uh i don't know about less material in the air it seems to atomize the clear more into a mist you've guys seen that before when i spray with it uh this is Develvis's other gun these are also on sale for the same price as the uh plus 350 this is a gti this is a this is hvlp uh compliant gun uh i don't care for this gun for uh clear coat but it's an excellent sealer gun and it's an excellent base gun you know as far as getting your metallic and stuff nice i like that gun that's what i use for my sealer and my base uh i checked on the coppers i personally don't have a copper gun uh Develvis Copper. Somebody asked me about the Develvis Copper, and uh, I know Gary Turbo Cobra. He has a copper. Him and Matt over there use a copper, and he really likes it. He seems to get good results from the copper. Uh, I did a little research on the copper. It's uh, in the $400 range, $50 more than the plus. Uh, at this current time, it's they're not running a special or anything on those at this time because it's a newer gun. However, <clears throat> the copper comes with a gun and it also comes with a digital regulator so uh you got to figure in the cost of the regulator i don't like anything digital around paint it doesn't seem to hold up it's just been my experience uh i just like a good gauge you know and i like the high flow the velvet regulator seems to work pretty good the packing seemed to last the longest and uh that's the other thing you really if you're going to buy a good gun you want to make sure that you get a regulator that's capable of uh flowing the cfm not the, the pressure but the volume of air that the paint gun needs uh a lot of these new cheaper paint guns if you just uh use the internal regulator in the gun like the sicola has an internal regulator all you really need to this sicola is put a uh, air fitting on it and use this to adjust your air pressure you don't really need a regulator <coughs> i like having the gauge you know when you when you do that you have to be able to adjust the pressure by the sound of the gun oh yeah and before i forget excuse me for a minute <coughs> velvet hammer uh uh this, uh, the solder that I had was RP, it wasn't an HVLP. So if yours is an HVLP, I, I've never sprayed one of, one of those. But uh, that's sort of like, you know, what you're talking about is sort of how the Sokola is. You know, it sprays really nice, but uh, it's just slow. Now I don't have the peel problem with the Sokola, it puts it out like glass, but uh, <coughs> if it's HVLP and you're having a peel issue, you can't add reducer <coughs> to the clear and uh, thin the viscosity out a little bit and it'll speed the gun up and it'll also uh, take some of your peel issues away at the same time so you might want to try that I've uh, recently I've been very reluctant to do it and I've even bitched about it uh, when I bought my Sokola, uh you guys remember I had issues with it drooling out of the front of the gun when I would go to the high solid clear you know you'd let go of the trigger and it would just drip out of the front of the gun. So, you know, I called Scola and they were like, yeah, right, 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 you need to reduce the clear. And I've just never been one to reduce the clear. And, uh, you know, I just did it one day. I tried it, you know, not too long ago. I've only been doing that for about a month now, two months. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that every clear is this way. But I use high solid two to one clear usually, you know, not a four to one clear. And uh, since I've been adding a reducer, man, it seems like I get less die back and it seems like the, uh, the clear is more shiny. You know, it goes on the car and it lays out nicer. 
And uh, I took that tip from Milo on his, uh, he's talking about the viscosity of your product. You know, he said that you should try to match your base, your sealer and your clear should all sort of be in the same, you know, now I don't want it as thin as my base, you know, uh, but man, you know, uh, everything I've been painting with the reducer and it seems to be more shiny and uh, just seems to lay out a lot easier, so. That's a good tip that I picked up from Milo, so you might want to try that, you know. I go up to about 5%, or basically, you know, I have a 2 to 1 clear, I go 2 to 1 to 1. And, uh, I mean, you can, you can go quite a bit with the reducer there, and uh, it seems to make a big difference. So that's where we're at there. I just thought I'd make that quick video. Somebody asked me about those two guns. And, uh... I think we gotta go do some small jobs today or something. I don't know, I gotta get these fenders bolted on this morning. I'm gonna build this front clip real quick and uh, see where we're at as far as the way the fenders bolt up. And I got this new piece here that he brought yesterday. Oh. And it came all dented too, all nice and smashed. And uh, Yep, we'll probably have to cut it and dice it and slice it and move it all around. So that's where we're at on that. So get back on this. I got my welding bottle filled yesterday, so that's good. We ran out of the gas and uh can finish doing that corner down there now. So we'll be moving on and hopefully maybe uh we'll paint this way uh Tom's here visiting. That would be a fun paint job. The beetle bug. I don't know though. We'll see how it goes. Got a lot of welding to do. Well, the welding part's the easy part. You know, it's sort of like when you cut lumber. Measure twice, cut once, you know what they say? So this is the uh, getting everything laid out and cut right and fitted before you weld it is the trick. I want to somehow get the door up here, but I'm sort of almost going to have to weld it to the chassis before I put the door on because uh, because of my braces. I'm just going to have to t trust that that kept my door opening true and, uh, you know, that it didn't change too much at the bottom down there. And uh, all we did was skin it. You know, we left the factory backing plate, so it should be good. And uh fits real nice. So it fits on the heater channels really nice, so it should be good. And we're fitting real nice against all our old uh, seam points. I need to plug weld the top there. You can see where I drilled the factory spot welds out. And uh, it's right up against the uh, back of the car there. Those are actually access plates that you can uh, cut out and buy when you put these in. I was able to clean two of them, though, instead of replacing them. So... Uh, yeah, I think those came out really nice. I don't know, I've seen some online that don't look quite so nice when they're put in. So I'm pretty happy with the way they they fit the car, you know. Anyway, until the door hits them and doesn't shut, then uh, you'll hear me uh, screaming and bitching. So that's where we're at on this. I need to trim the, uh, the inner fender well down here to fit a little better on the aftermarket firewall. And... Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really hard to uh, make all these pieces and convince the customer that uh, you're not just cutting up their new parts because, uh, you know, they look uh, sort of concerned when the shit doesn't fit right. And, uh, yeah, I think the problem is, is that, you know, that stamp right there doesn't say Volkswagen, you know. It's no different when you build a Toyota or a Honda. And uh, with aftermarket parts, yeah, when I worked at, uh, worked at one body shop, we used a lot of aftermarket parts. And, uh, you know, we got them, these, these, uh, we had these saws, and we have a bunch of these. And uh, <clears throat> when I worked at this one shop, we basically just, uh, there was, uh, Four of us in the back, back shop, four body men. We were all on commission. 
And uh, there was uh, one, two, three, there, I think there was about eight body men at this shop and about four or five painters. And it was an independent small shop. And uh, all four of us really got along good. And uh, everybody's always better at something than you are, man. I don't care who you are. You know, somebody's already got a trick on something and they can do something better than you can. And that's just how it is. And uh, very rarely do you get four or five guys together that, you know, their egos aren't so big that they can uh, admit that. And uh, one day we all figured out we'd all go to lunch together and uh, they hated it up front. They thought we were like a, like a union in the back, <laughs> but we got our jobs done. And, uh, you know, one guy would be done on Friday and the other guy would be struggling to get his stuff built. And, uh, you know, cause Friday is always the get it done day and deliver it. And, uh, you know, the one older guy out of the bunch suggested that we just make a team in the back and split the hours and you know when you're on commission you're like whoa i don't know man especially when you make decent money you know but i was one of the guys struggling on friday to get my cars put together so i went along with it and uh it was the best concept that i ever you know took part in and uh, basically we took that and used it at toyota and it's sort of like a 3m lean process if you ever been through that or watched those videos of my favorites that are buried way back in the back that's basically the process you know uh we uh we would attack the car you know instead of one guy doing one car you know obviously you have to get the car to the to the painter and back from the painters where the team concept comes in when you're building the car and uh We'd have four guys on one car, we'd knock them all out, and uh, we'd be back there playing cards and, you know, goofing off, and the boss would come back there, and all our work would be done, so. But, uh, yeah, just the teamwork's always a good thing, and, uh, you know, you can get a bunch of people's ideas and make them work. That's how you make stuff happen. I don't know where I was going with that, but... Uh, as far as the copper gun, uh, again, Turbo Cobra, that's the site you need to go to. Talk to Gary, he's a real good guy over there. And uh, Gary and Matt, I know personally have one of those. They're in the YouTube garage gang. And uh, they'd be happy to tell you all about that gun. I've seen Gary use it and uh, he seems to be very happy with it. Uh, from what I can tell in the, uh, in the developer's manual reading about it, basically that's the gun that uh, replaces the Develvis uh, Plus, you know, it's the next uh, step up for Develvis in their uh, gun technology. And uh, they also have a gun called Quick Clean, which is a little cheaper. And uh, I haven't seen anybody use one of those, but they're about $40 cheaper than the, the, uh, than the copper. So it would be in the same price range as the uh, Plus, but it also it doesn't come with a regulator. So I think that's the uh, that's the difference in the price and the plus in the uh, copper. And uh, the copper is probably going to be more like the Sokola. You know, it might be a little slower technology than the, uh, than the plus is what I'm thinking after reading the, reading the footnotes and stuff, you know. <clears throat> but uh, it's, uh, that's all I can tell you about it because really I've never sprayed with the copper yet. i have sprayed with just about everything else now. But, uh, yeah, I had somebody call me out on if I ever used some guns. So I've been uh, working with the gun reps and spraying with all the different guns here lately. And uh, I've almost got them all down now. But uh, I haven't got the DeBelvis rep yet. But uh, the Sokola guy is coming here. We're going to do a, a demo here. I have to get this nova out of here. And I got to get some uh, EPA filters for the back of my booth there before he comes. Hey. But uh, we'll do some stuff. Is JC on the shirt already? JC? I don't know. I don't think so, right? So I should email him and see if he wants on there? Yeah, you should just put him on there whether he wants to be on there or not. Just aggravate him. I mean, why stop now? <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. So, hey, uh... JC, you know who you are. You don't go by that online, but I think we're going to put you on the shirt. There you go. I found another blast from the past there for you. There's a picture from Speed World. And uh, a little fun in the sun. 
So man, I haven't heard from uh, my buddy. I don't know what's going on with him. And uh, the paint pimp's been sort of quiet lately. Sort of quiet. Think he's gonna pop up and have that car painted or what? What do you think? And uh, Seth, really good seeing you this morning. Who? Ronnie. Ronnie who? Oh yeah, Ronnie Hope wanted to be at it. I forgot to tell you that. I thought he already told you though. I just assumed I put him on. Yeah, he wants to be on there. He's gonna get a camera. We got a buddy, somebody broke in his house and stole his camera. And all his movies that he'd made of his kids and stuff. And uh, so he's the guy that has a suburban with the engine problems, but he watches everybody's videos from his phone. And uh, he's gonna be getting a camera soon and doing some videos. But uh, they, yeah, they stole his camera and they threw all his home movies and stuff out in the garbage can. He said he would have dropped all the charges if he could have just got his movies back. He lost all his movies of his kids playing football and all Christmas videos and all that good stuff. I guess before you know it was digital, obviously. And uh, they threw that stuff in the dumpster and pawned the camera for 25 bucks. And uh, yeah, they've never done anything to those guys. They caught them, and uh... If anybody's got an old camera and they're not using it, donate it. Uh, not too much water in the boat. Looks like the cover worked. It's been raining here. Thought we were gonna have to build an ark. But, uh... Yep, that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. Everything's turning green again now. We're gonna be mowing the grass before you know it. All right, guys, I hope I answered some questions on the guns. Didn't get too sidetracked. And uh, I'll go upload this and try to keep the camera rolling today.